PaulInstitute.org is really making waves with the syndicated columns that I see in newspapers all over the country. They're doing syndicated radio vignettes that are on many of these same stations. Uh, he's doing satellite television, getting picked up around the world. He's doing uh, radio interviews almost every day. He is, I think, almost more effective now than when he was in Congress from 1996 until uh, just a year or so ago. His son is one of the major front runners for president. We're going to talk about that and more. Joining us is former congressman and the leader of the libertarian liberty movement worldwide, Dr. Ron Paul. And DrudgeReport.com picked it up. We picked it up. They got a lot of attention. Ron Paul's predictions, uh, really, for 2015 and beyond, what he sees coming in the new year. Now, he wrote that a few weeks ago. Now we're into the new year. Uh, now a lot of economists uh, are saying they believe that the real economic implosion is 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 getting closer. So he's going to uh, spend 20 minutes with us, giving us his breakdown of what he sees uh, coming. Uh, and 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 remember, as he said many times, if we put out the ideas of liberty as the solution to the crisis, we could use the crisis at the end of this cycle to try to promote freedom and fix things. The socialists and the insiders are going to try to use it to bring in more tyranny. So we're reaching that critical point. Dr. Paul, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you, Alex. Good to be with you again. You've got the floor. Tell us what's, what you see uh, coming. Well, um, you know, it's, even though I wrote something, I think it was about 18 pages long, but it was longer. When I was doing it, I was thinking about my special orders that I used to do on the House floor when you could get a special hour. So it goes over, you know, the analysis of what's going on and why we have trouble and what I think we should do. But actually, the motivation for me to start to write it was just to write something much shorter and talk about the crisis in the inner city, you know, the militarization of our police, the abuse of our civil liberties. At the same time, the demands of the inner cities, because I sympathize with those who are on the receiving end of the militarization of the police. At the same time, uh, you, you know, those individuals in the inner city are, uh, you know, they have been ex they have been used to have an entitlement mentality, and it, it just serves their interest to demand more and more, and then we end up nice. in a conflict. Well, each side has different demands. I think each side are wrong to a degree, uh, but I certainly think that uh, the big issue of the inner cities, and I mentioned in my paper that uh, this has been going on for a long time. I, I, I think it was even in the 60s, the riots we had in the 60s had a lot to do with the inner cities and the, and the poverty in the inner cities. Everybody agrees there's poverty there, but uh, some people think, well, we need more government transfer programs, which I don't agree with, but we need to understand first that we protect civil liberties for everybody equally. At the same time, we have to understand poverty. Then you have to get into economic policy. You have to get into the Federal Reserve, the destruction of the currency, the destruction of the middle class, and why the welfare state ends up getting the very wealthy people in charge of the distribution of wealth. So I've always maintained that welfare is and the principle is so bad, but it's, inter it's accepted by the far left and the people who want something for free, but they don't get anything because the people who are really in charge, the bankers in the military industrial complex, they get in charge and they use that principle to their benefits. And I think that's the mess that we're in, in today because the, the cities are getting poorer, the middle class is being eliminated. And there's these con constant demands, and I think it's because we've lost our way in the understanding of what personal liberty is all about and property rights and sound money and all the things I've talked about for so long. Uh, so I saw the big debate between the militarization of the police and the people who are on the receiving end and the poverty in the inner city as a consequence of a lot of ignorance as, as far as what is good economic policy and what true liberty is all about. I mean, true liberty doesn't mean that you get what you want and you demand it and that you're entitled to it. That has nothing to do with liberty. That's a, that represents a violation of liberty. So that is the general theme of what I was writing about, but uh, even though most of it was warning people and telling people what a mess I think we're in, I really 
conclude with a bit of optimism, as I always uh, do, that, you know, the Internet is providing us a vehicle for uh, getting our message out, and I think that uh, the message is alive and well. I think the young people are listening. I think what you do on, on radio and all your efforts, I think, is, is very beneficial, and a lot of people realize the mess we're in, that uh, the economy is in shambles and the foreign policy is ridiculous. So they're looking for answers, and I believe the, the uh, freedom movement uh, provides those answers. Well, and, and certainly we've predicted what's coming. You've written books on the subjects. We know how this works. We're not rocket scientists. This has happened hundreds and hundreds of times in history, or, or even more, hundreds of times in different countries just the last few hundred years. Going back to your essay that's at ronpaulinstitute.org, we posted it at infowars.com as well. Uh, inner city turmoil and other crises, my predictions for 2015. I want to get into some of those other crises, but you know know I've always been a you know nonpartisan constitutionalist, but I have supported libertarians who run as Republicans or Democrats and have supported you and your son and, 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 and others against statist. But the Democrats, I think, really have sunk to a new low with their open fanning of racial division, of anti-police garbage that isn't meant to reform police, but meant to create a balkanization uh, and really to uh, Democratic connected groups uh, out singing deck the halls with dead cops I mean, we have these videos really vicious provocations that if libertarians did anything like this we'd be arrested uh, and i know you're familiar with this what do you think the attempt is there we know unemployment's doubled for blacks under obama we know collectivism has hurt them more than anybody is this a desperate attempt to just distract and make it racial or or scapegoat the police because i'm a critic of the police state as are you you, but not of just scapegoating the individual police. No, and this is a, this, the far left likes this evil, and they like uh, you know the discord because then they figure that they can promote their programs. Just like I said, you know, this inner city is a mess. So they're arguing that the sixteen trillion dollars we've spent in the past fifty years on on the trying to get rid of uh, poverty, uh, you know, starting with LBJ, they figure thirty two trillion dollars would would do the job. But no, I think they're provocateurs, and I think they're small, but they do get the crowds riled up, and they sort of, you know, I think the Al Sharptons of the world are, uh, I, I think well, one one uh, suggestion I had made is, uh, you know, there's going to be a mess, there is a mess, people ought to understand the Second Amendment, and they ought to uh, make sure that they, uh, you know, pay attention to the false promises of the Al Sharptons of the world, and that is why... You know, the people, if you and I talk about this, you know, we can get on the receiving end. Oh, you know, blaming blacks and all that kind of stuff. But what they ought to do is look to uh, two black leaders that we have uh, in economic policy, and they understand this, and they understand racism, because uh, because they have put up with it in their own life. And that's Walter Williams and Tom Sowell. Uh, these, these guys are are just great. They're free market people. They believe in liberty, and they understand why there's poverty in the inner city, and I think they're they're fantastic. So if your listeners have not read Walter Williams and Tom Sowell, they, I'm sure they have because of, I know your audience, but there may be some, I think it's really worthwhile looking uh, at what they say rather than, than believing that Al Sharpton talks for people, you know, and, and he, he just aggravates things, and uh, and of course, that generally what happens, uh, you know, they go in there and, and just stir up more trouble. Sure, let's elaborate briefly on that and then get into some, some of the other warnings and crises you see uh, getting worse uh, in the new year. And then I want to talk about the economy with you and then the election coming up and more. Again, former Congressman Ron Paul of ronpaulinstitute.org uh, is our guest. Amazing analysis, amazing essays and articles uh, there every day, videos every day at ronpaulchannel.com. Uh, specifically, you were alluding to the Second Amendment as a good thing uh, to maintain order if society breaks down. Undoubtedly, I think the Democrats would like to start a limited civil war in this country. Uh, can you elaborate on your statement about the Second Amendment's role uh, in any type of societal breakdown? Yeah, I was thinking about in the midst of the, the problem up in Ferguson, uh, what would I do uh, if I lived there? 
and I had a store. I mean, uh, it, it just makes no sense for the people who feel like they've been mistreated and they want to strike out against white people and the establishment. They go and destroy buildings that are owned by black people, their neighbors, the people who make a living there. They'll go and bust up their windows. So it made no sense. But it seems like uh, there wasn't this understanding that they have a right and they should be defending their property. So, uh, you know, if uh, if you really had an understanding of the Second Amendment, whether you were in Ferguson or wherever, if people started breaking in and you see people jumping in and out of the broken windows and hauling off their loot, uh, it seems to me like maybe some of that could have been averted by just somebody having uh, a right to defend themselves, and that means the use of the Second Amendment. But evidently... That was not done, I guess. Uh, people, maybe the rules are too strict in places like this and in the cities. So uh, I, sure. I, I think there would be less of it if they knew that they were uh, likely to be shot at if they broke into something. Well, no building. kidding. You try to burn down my house or business, you're going to get shot. And that's not because I'm looking for trouble. That's the normal behavior. And in areas where people act like that, you don't have looting and robbing like this because folks would end up pushing daisies and not be on the green side. Uh, Ron Paul, moving quick in the six, seven minutes we've got left with you here today. I want to get into more of your predictions, uh, but shifting gears back to Obama himself. Even Turley, the liberal professor of law, says Obama has done about triple uh, the constitutional violations of Bush that you and I and others were big critics of as well. The Republican leadership is standing down when Obama wants to open the border, shut down more power plants, put our military under NATO control. Uh, I mean, for all intents and purposes, is Obama Obama not setting the precedent for an imperial presidency, and what should be done about it? Well, he's continuing it, but that's been going on for so long. I mean, uh, we could go back and study Woodrow Wilson. Sure. <laughs> he was no saint, you know, and even though some of that stuff, the, the, our government's backed off after uh, Wilson was out of office and after he died, uh, but the uh, the process has continued. Uh, you know, we haven't really had a constitutional president in a long, long time. So whether it was Bush or and Obama's just building on this. Executive order's been around for a long time. We've been going to war with executive orders and without declarations. Uh, we have a monetary system that can bail out anybody, everybody, not only in the United States and our corporations, but worldwide. Trillions and trillions of dollars, and that's not done with approval. I think the Congress is totally derelict in their responsibility because they allow it to happen. And uh, policies come, and the Fed does what they please. There's no limits on uh, who, what, which friends they can bail out. So it is a process, and yes, he's an imperial president, but uh, he's just falling in the footsteps of, of others. And uh, he has... Um, you know, especially been bad on the curtailment of freedom of speech. You talk about all this uh, talk about uh, what was going on in France. Uh, I wish they would deal with, uh, uh, you know, what is going on in this country because uh, Obama's been known to put people in prison if they if they uh, don't reveal their sources and and so it's freedom of uh, freedom of speech is being attacked here as well. Well, that's right. On the heels of this so-called ISIS hack that's now been traced back to Maryland and U.S. sources, just like the North. Korea hack was fake. Now Obama, AFP reports, has renewed push for cybersecurity and restricting internet freedom. Uh, Ron Paul, do you buy into ISIS being able to hack U.S. military sites and take them over, or do you think this might be a false flag? Well, I'm always skeptical. What was it that they were blaming the North Koreans on not long ago? I said they can't even turn on their lights. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you know, they don't have any lights there. It's a dark yeah. country, and they were accusing them of this expertise in, in in something, uh, you know, on the Internet, and uh, I, I was very doubtful. So, yes, you know, whether it's a deliberately planned false flag or whether it is accidental or a blowback or an unintended consequence, it's always used to expand the state. And then when there is a problem, there's an assassination or a bombing, and we have a government investigation. It's have an investigation where the investigation isn't to seek out truth, and most of the time we never get to the truth, but we do get the defense of the government. You know, when, when this torture issue came up and they had this, you know, right now they're not releasing the report, you know, in the Congress and they, and they should. But uh, they talked about uh, all the torturers and uh, they're finding out that people were breaking the law right and left. 
But none of them get punished. None of them go to uh, go to prison. Nobody got penalized for uh, messing up on uh, the information that was available before 9-11. But for the torturers, the only person that went to prison is the CIA agent that came clean and warned us and told us the truth about it, so we put him in prison. That's what is what is disgusting, and that is what people have to know. And and uh, this and we're making progress here. I think it's like eighty percent of the people are very untrusting toward the government. And you think, oh well, that's terrible. You don't want people untrusting. Yeah, but but if the government is not taking care of us and protecting our liberties, if the people are waking up and all of a sudden saying, hey, you know, we we can't really rely on the government to tell us the truth. That means they have to seek the truth someplace else and. Hopefully we all can provide that for them. Oh, absolutely. In the few minutes we've got left, some of the other predictions that are in your essay that's up at ronpaulinstitute.org and infowars.com. Other predictions or crises you see in 2015. And then briefly, I want to talk about, I mean, I believe Rand Paul is the best person for president. It's obvious he's going to run. You know, the news just said a few weeks ago, you know, he, uh, of course he's going to run. You said it six, eight months ago. I mean, sure. I mean, Rand Paul's getting ready. Ted Cruz. Uh, I mean, you see Jeb Bush. Absolutely terrible. Might as well just have Hillary. You've got Hillary, but is this a dynasty where we're going to have King George the Ninth or King King Clinton the Twelfth? I mean, we're not North Korea or England. There's got to. In fact, let's cover that first. Election uh, coming up, 2016. It's pretty much already starting. Uh, where do you? I mean, obviously you support your son, but he is the best candidate there. I like Ted Cruz as well. And then it just gets worse from there. <laughs> So, no, uh, obviously, Rand is doing quite well, and uh, they have to sort of, you know, they were giving him some attention, and it wasn't all bad. It was it was decent, and a lot of people know him now, and they like what he's been saying. But, uh, but all of a sudden, uh, what has happened the last couple of weeks, first, it was... Uh, uh, they don't. They didn't want uh, you know Rand and others to get much attention, so they had to divert the attention. Then they say, "Oh, Bush is going to run. Jeb Bush is a great candidate. And then Bush, Bush, Bush. He's you know getting ready, and he's going to have the money, and he's our guy." But then uh, you know there's dissension among the ranks, and uh, evidently Romney uh, wasn't as wasn't too pleased to just step back. So he's. You know, maybe I'm going to run. So the media plays this up. Now, the only two candidates that seem to exist <laughs> will be Bush and, Rom Bush and Romney. That's right. Uh, so that's their way of exclusion. It's sometimes even when they say, well, there's now, you know, 10 people, 15 people going to run, they'll include Rand, but it's not where it was by all the polling, you know, a month ago. Uh, these guys didn't even show up, but, but all of it, which means that, He's on the receiving end that uh, I guess I could say I had received as well. They know how to uh, handle it in, in, in the public if uh, they think you're doing too well sure. and they, they don't want you to succeed. Well, that's why I thought it was smart that Rand started basically doing presidential type uh, election things first. Uh, so that he would get the attention up front and is still a front runner in most polls. That's why they're scared and are trying to only put Jeb Bush uh, and Romney out there and make that fight all about it. We don't need Mitt Romney after two runs. We don't need Jeb Bush. My goodness. We don't need Chris Christie. These guys are, are just Democrats or, or uh, Beltway Republican rhinos. We need Rand Paul. Uh, and I mean, he is just the best candidate across the board. I mean, can you, what do you say to the libertarian and constitutionalist troops out there, what can they do to really make sure that Iran stays at the top of the ticket? Well, I'm not too keen on giving people precise advice. A lot of people have asked me, and I would uh, sort of uh, try to dismiss it a bit and say, well, do whatever you want. You know, if you want to be involved, get involved. If you, if you like a candidate, uh, support them, you know, campaign. And uh, I thought that was what was so neat about our campaign, sure. you know, is that a lot of people did spontaneously do a lot of things that organize and raise money. So I think that people need to do something uh, to be helpful. And sometimes it's running for office and, and uh, you know, at the same time you're running for office, uh, you can speak out about all the issues and all the other candidates. Sure. So it's, uh, it's something that uh, the individuals have to decide. 
even if an individual is uh, much more into education and all, teaching people uh, how why the, they should understand the issues that we're that we're uh, pushing, you know, on the sound money and civil liberties, that to me is very important. You have to change people's absolutely, attitudes. and that that would help a person like Rand as well. Ron, you've got to go. You're already over. Right. I want to get any other just quick predictions, but please say to Rand, just just my layman advice: do what Ted Cruz is doing, attacking Jeb Bush and attacking Romney as, as squishy metal because that's what we need to keep him at the top. From my view, he needs to come out in, in a classy way, obviously, and point out how bad Jeb Bush is, point out how bad Chris Christie is, point out how bad uh, you know Romney is compared, or they are going to really try to push him to the back. Anything else you think is important for 2015 to warn people about? No, other than the fact that I think our economic crisis is going to continue. It's going to get worse during this year. It's not going to get better. Uh, the government is going to try to play it up that things are getting better. I think our foreign policy is going to continue. I think it's very, very dangerous. Uh, and uh, this country has to face up the fact that it's bankrupt. If it doesn't, uh, things are going to get much worse before it gets better. RonPaulInstitute.org. Thank you so much. Okay. Godspeed. Very good. Thanks. All right, there he goes, ladies and gentlemen. Ron Paul joining us for the last 25 minutes uh, or so. Exclusive, intense, in-depth, real question interview. Rand Paul is the best. I, I trust him. I've known him for, gosh, I can't believe it's 18, 19 years. 19 years. And he's the guy for president. Uh, Ted Cruz will make a great VP, but I'm telling you, Ted Cruz is getting more aggressive. That's why in polls, he's now number one. In real polls, Ted Cruz is now taking the lead because he's being aggressive. It's what people want. We're on the mark.